Let's talk for a minute. So, I've had some people ask me about this. This is, of course, my Herald's Baton. Now, let's be clear, this does not denote any rank or station. This is not any sort of authority. Um, this is something that you will see me carrying around, either choked up below the head or occasionally I'll be holding it out like this. Um, and it's, it is a means of amplifying the visual signature of my motions. Now, why, uh, why do I do this? The Herald's Baton is a period implement that was found uh, in the northern and central European courts. Um, and it was a lot like a conductor stick. Uh, a lot of the historical examples are much smaller than this. Um, this is much closer to a mace, really. Um, but there were examples of authority figures or masters of ceremony carrying this. Um, uh, one of the cousins of this type of implement is the Grand, uh, the Grand Marshal's staff or Grand Marshal's mace in a graduation ceremony or a uh, uh, parade, you know, a ceremonial item. But this is something that I made for myself because it serves a purpose and I've got a story for you. And I want to tell you this story. Now I wasn't using this baton. This baton I made uh, as a result of this story. So it was Gulf Wars. Uh, and it was, I believe, my second Gulf Wars back probably nine years ago, give or take, it doesn't matter. And one of the heralds that I was working with was Taryn the Wayward. Great guy, he's out of Meridies. He and I have talked for uh, well, pretty much ever since then. At the time, he was his lordship, but he's since been elevated to Pelican. But he showed me his baton. He had this huge baton. And it, it had like this big freaking head on it and had a disc down here. And he said he cannibalized that thing together out of a uh, chair leg, a couple of lamp fittings, a uh, piece of all thread down the length. I mean, it was, it was a real Frankenstein's monster. It was a gorgeous piece. He still has it. I know he still has it. And I just uh, amazing visual impact. Now that year... For the opening ceremonies, of course, all the kingdoms and all of their entourage and all of the present people at Gulf Wars line up and they parade through the uh, merchants area and through the classroom area and then they come in and they go to the castle. Now, I was the guy at the castle and has the royalty and their entourage came up, I would direct them to my left. And then as the populace came up down that same path, I'd direct them to my right. And it wasn't too hard to tell each and each another apart. So I'm sitting there, and as they come up, and I'd make sure it was a good distance away so they could see me, and I was holding Taryn's big baton. And they would see me, and I, from a distance, I would point, and I would gesture this way. Then I would point, and I would gesture that way. And it was going, you know, uh, for the first two kingdoms, it was great. I mean, it's... When you're, when you're trying to direct 200 people, 100, 200 people at a pop, um, you know, this is a great way of, of identifying yourself at a distance as, as the traffic signal. And, you know, it was, it was really cool watching this whole parade of, of mounted royals and their walking entourage go this way. And you watch this tromping army go that way. <sighs> it was right, I think it was around the third, maybe second kingdom in. Um, I, I go and I wave the royals this way and I remember that the it was the prince and princess I think might have been king and queen but they were dressed as hussars and if you don't know what the hussars are um, you can look up the winged hussars and these are uh, late period Polish cavalry who have literal wings built into their back plates with giant feathers on them uh, really imposing look but uh the horse went left, or her right, I suppose, but she was leaning the other way accidentally, and I watched this, this woman come off the horse, and there was no roll, there was no tuck, there was no mitigation. She hit shoulder first, and there was a dead thunk when she hit the ground, um, which, of course, scared the horse. The horse jumped after she left the horse, and I watched, oh, I think it was 10 or 15 people, including the horse handler, you know, rush in to try and uh, keep the horse from panicking and tend to this person who'd just taken a pretty substantial fall. This was no pony. That woman had 
come down about her shoulder had traveled probably six or eight feet on its way down and it was nothing but acceleration and I'm emergency services but I immediately realized I have no place here there is there's nothing for me to do there's probably eight or ten people tending this but I looked over past the incident and here comes Meridiase and it's like this wall this giant block of about 200 people with Terran at the head just marching and in kind of the pandemonium of the moment they did not realize what was going on and they were fixing to march right up on top of this developing emergency situation and again I'm a former emergency services the last thing we need right now with a horse that's still on edge and an injured person is 200 people tromping around them that just no good's gonna come of this and I remember looking and my eyes got real wide and I grabbed the baton and I took five huge steps kind of almost through I went around the worst of the incident when I got to the other side I came over and I I held the staff all the way over my head and then I pointed right at Taryn and you could see his eyebrows he was kind of like what and then I went boom I just shoved this thing straight out in a big crossbar motion we had no coordination there was no agreed upon gesture we had no language here I was using his baton all he saw was me do this and you could see from a hundred and probably a hundred yards away maybe 110 you could see the recognition in his face and he spins around and he holds his baton up and he goes like this and in one chaotic crushing moment you watch the in three heavy steps you see all of Meridius go step step crook and they stopped stopped about 95 yards away and I remember looking going oh thank God and I just stood there like that I stood there like that with my hand up holding this thing over my nose up like this and uh, I looked over my shoulder and they were still tending to her she had taken a pretty substantial hit um, and I, I didn't know what the situation was I didn't know if they were calling EMS I didn't know what I did know was that as long as Meridies was back there we weren't going to introduce 200 points of chaos to the situation and I held them there for probably about two or three minutes and I, you could see some of their eyes kind of looking around some of their faces like what the hell's going on why are we waiting here and I didn't care I was like this parade is stopped by my orders you can yell at me later and probably about I guess four minutes later um, the handler got the horse off to one side the horse was still a little spooked I mean that that whole incident really kind of got it on edge you could tell and uh, the lady who'd fallen the royal had fallen they got her up on her feet and I remember looking over my shoulder at one point and she was walking under her own power I don't think it was anything truly uh, substantial at that point they'd established that this was um, obviously not life-threatening not worthy of emergency medical services but in the initial moment I mean that was a, a rock-solid crash from a high height so um, they, they were all scared for a minute and after I looked over and they had kind of cleared the incident and and people were up and moving and no one was talking about calling EMS and and you know the, the temperature had died down I turned back around and I pointed at Taryn and I did this big circle over my head just kind of a hey get get I'm getting your attention and he looked over and I did this giant follow me sweep over my shoulder and he turned around did the same thing and he did the follow me sweep and he started marching and here comes all of Meridies trucking in behind him and I went back to directing traffic Royals over there everyone else over there and and I did that for the rest of the known world at the uh, event uh, and it was one of those one of those moments that sticks in my mind because I remember that moment where I just stared at Taryn and I did this and despite the fact that we just met despite the fact we weren't good friends yet despite the fact we're from different kingdoms by the fact I had no authority to call this halt I was going on a this is my best judgment of how we keep the situation from getting worse and I had no authority he saw the gesture he trusted my judgment and he turned around and he implemented it and it was the coolest damn moment let me tell you um, and I my understanding is the woman in question was fine um, I think I saw her with her arm in a sling like the next day but I know I saw her with her arm out loose the day after I, I'm pretty sure I recall that the horse was fine I don't think there's any lasting injuries 
Um, and he wasn't, you know, the horse wasn't injured or anything in that whole incident. And I never heard any complaint from Taryn about it. Uh, Meridier's never, I never heard any rumbles of people long-term complaining. So it was just one of those really cool moments where things just happened the right way that they needed to so that the right thing could happen. And I wanted to share that with you because it was such a cool moment. And I thank Taryn for showing me his batons because he has several. And as you can see, I took that to heart. And this is my Herald's baton. Um, and this is actually my second one. Um, if you ever want to know where the first one is, ask me. I've got a cool story for that, too. So that's, that's my story. And I, I wanted to share that with you so you understand um, why I think the baton is cool and why I think more Heralds should use them and why, why the baton is such a special thing for me. So till the next event, I'll see you there. Goodbye. God bless.